Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud, and you are about to listen to a compilation. Battle of the Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud and David Lauer. Corey flirts with Cheyenne once again. Yep. But he doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. You yeah. Know, he's really fucking shipping away at her. says that he's sexually frustrated, <laughs> and she's not going to give up on her morals. Like, she's just like, no, I'm not having a Corey. She's like... For whatever reason, she decided she's not going to have sex on this show, even though Corey's trying his damnedest. Yeah, she's not sh- having it. He should move on. He so, should do something else. Yeah. Is that really reflecting good on him? He's striking right? out, yeah. But the thing is, is he's still looking for that redemption. Because think, think of the sin he committed last year on Bloodlines. He got with Anissa. Oh. <laughs> like, he's trying to cleanse himself from that. Like, I can understand. He wants Cheyenne. Okay. He needs to get something. Like, he's got to get rid There's of the so stench of Anissa, right? Yeah. And he's like, you know, and I've considered it, but uh, I don't know if Ashley's going <laughs> to be that, that soap, that bar of soap that I need. You know what yeah, I mean? she's not going to be very cleansing. No. No. <laughs> she gets up, and he, he confronts Camilla, and Camilla's like, oh, yeah, what are you going to do? Because Tony tends to really kind of... Uh, Puff, not necessarily puff his chest out. I guess I'll say that. Yeah, puff his chest out and kind of stand up in a very confrontational like pose, which is usually reserved for when you're about to get in it with another man. The thing is, he doesn't really have a a different take for a woman. You know, he does the same thing. He still puffs his chest out and tries to look down on them, get in their face. I mean, he's he's stood next to people before, but usually just kind of has his arms. Resting yeah. on each other, just kind of in front of him, kind of business like, whatever, sage like, whatever. But this time he goes beyond that. He actually puts his arms up, corners Camille, literally, quite literally. Mm-hmm. You know, this would almost be like a clinch like scenario. He's got her up against the UFC, fence. I guess for sure. Fence. Yeah, and Camille's like, you know, she says, Oh, what are you going to do? Hit me and shit like that? Now, everything Camilla says, yeah, she's getting threatened or he's putting on this threatening pose or whatever and she's responding like she like anyone would but you also have to add the fact that she's camilla fucking camilla made her and she's trying yeah she's trying to instigate it as well because like tony kind of starts this weird aggressiveness camilla was always kind of chill and just like laughing and saying stupid shit at him she never seemed mean about it and like moments before that when they were yelling camilla's like you're giving them what they want you want they want us to fight they don't give a shit about yeah. us you're you're you know you're falling for it you fucking idiot like this is camilla doesn't know how to damper a fire she only knows how to, to squirt more fluid on it fire fluid, lighter fluid okay right? <laughs> same kind of fluid here I'm not saying she's a squirter <laughs> and then what's the first thing to appear a mariachi band shows up. Yeah, and we get some ranchero music, and it's they're just blasting on the horns and playing the little guitars. Yeah, the certain song. Yeah, and then it stops, and they clap. They're like, "Good, good." And then they start up, and they start playing the same song over again. <laughs> yeah, and then it stops and they clap. They're like, good, good. And then they start up and they start playing the same song <laughs> over again. And they're like, oh. Sarah's like, oh, they're just going to do it over and over again. I see what this is. Sarah has it pegged immediately. That's why I like Sarah. She's kind of likable at times. Yeah, right? she's a little bit. Like, yeah. I know. I. I've definitely dampered on her some. And then as we're watching that, like you have like two guys in masks running around and they're they were like a couple of luchadors with chainsaws. Yeah, exactly, dude. They just jump through the woods <laughs> and they're like, Wow, and they have jerseys on, it's like Gonzalez and Hernandez or something. Oh, and Bad Taste Hernandez too soon. Hernandez? Is that yeah, football? Oh, the guy who murdered some people is going to jail? Aaron Hernandez? Yeah. Huh. I mean, it's, it's not saying the victim's names. It's saying his name. It's a very common 
Mexican name. They're in Mexico. It was a joke that you took far too serious. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Instead of laughing, you're like, I, well, got, I don't I believe got... so because it's been a couple months. <laughs> I wanted to go politically correct with it, but I didn't know where to go. And I got lost, and I was like, what do I do? Uh, anyways, the other thing is, though, is that you had to pay attention to detail. And sure enough, like, a lot of these women, they can pay attention to detail. That's what they do in life, man. They're always, they always, like, oh, his shoes are ugly, they're red. Like the juggler you mentioned. Yeah. That's exactly what Nani said. Like Girls I'm paying look attention. At shoes and clothes. Yeah, and uh, and, and I was like, this is brilliant. Off. This is like the in retrospect afterwards, I'm like, holy shit! Like a lot of chicks do this on the reg. You know what I mean? Like that's just part of life. You just like pay attention to little details because that's how you stab at your enemy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get a lot of pent up aggression here, man. No, the women do. At least the women that I know. Oh, bitches, always the victim, they're always just the like bridesmaid. they're always just like looking at each other just like this is my best friend supposedly even though they hate each other like you ever watch Arrested Development and there's Lucille yeah. and Lucille 2 oh yeah you know that passive aggressive frenemy oh, that they have back and forth stabbing at I, each other I know so like, many fucking girls that are just, like that and it's just annoying let's get into the mission um, I honestly don't remember too much I just wrote down the questions and maybe we'll kind of go through that way Okay. I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of random questions. Some of them are funny, some are entertaining. Um, okay, question number one. What's your partner's eye color or whatever? Which can be easy and whatever. I don't know. Like, do you pay attention to people's eye color? <sighs> Not really. I really don't. No. Um, Devin gets his wrong because Cheyenne's eyes are hazel. Which is like, bullshit, but hazel's a bullshit answer because hazel means half green and half brown. Is that what it is? Yeah. I know it's like brown and something else. It's like a greenish, brownish, yellowish, but I think it's half green and half brown where it's like, no, you have to stay committal to just either green or brown. You can't have a half answer, and that's what hazel is. It's a half answer. So right as I was like, hazel, I was like, no, there's no way anyone gets hazel right. Because technically, I think I have hazel eyes, but you know what? I just say I have green eyes. So that's what I say. Yeah. Yeah, because there's, like, the outer part is more green, the inner part is more brown. Honestly, like, I've had two ex-girlfriends that have had hazel eyes. I mean, they still have hazel eyes. (laughs) They didn't until I (laughs) plucked them out. (laughs) (laughs) When I do that. It's over, Vince. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Just plucked them out. No, it was a serial killer type, like, ritualistic Oh, it wasn't me. I'm not even on the suspect list? No, no, you're the number (laughs) one suspect. Fuck! He's never convicted. They always blame the boyfriend. <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah, I true. still have questions about you. How do you think I'm carrying a knife in my pocket? But Self like, defense. but like, you know, when they're like, when they're like, so, you know, what, what color are my eyes? Or I don't know. They'll eventually ask me that, and I'm like, brown. And they're like, no, it's fucking hazel, you bastard and shit. Dario and bananas. It's a race between the two of them to dig up their partners. Dario gets to Nicole first. They ring the bell, and I'm like, holy yeah. shit. It was won, nuts. Woo. When it was, they both get to dig them up at the same time. And then I'm like, okay. I'm like, Bananas is going to have better technique at shoveling. And Dario's just not, I'm like, Dario's in his long arms. It's going to take him too long to shovel. But, like, no. I'm like, that was my fear. I'm like, Bananas is going to end up winning this, and, like, he's going to ruin the whole episode. I was so terrified. <laughs> I'm like, they have this awesome alliance going, and Bananas is just going to thwart it all. <laughs> Little okay. did I know it was still gonna happen that way, but like Dario won. It was like I was so happy when Dario won. I'm like, yes, good Dario won. I'm like, you know what? Bananas and Vince, they're both going in. They might come out victors, but at least they're gonna go in and have to earn to come back. Yeah, they're gonna have to sweat it out at least, at least a little bit. Yep. One of those two. But the other thing I have to mention is that, like, I mean, it could have went. It's just digging. I didn't assume Bananas would win, but I'm like, well, I mean, they have been on a hot streak. So I've been, I was pleasantly surprised with, with, with Dario winning. Um, I just mentioned that because later on, TJ is going to be like, Dario, you defeated Bananas in digging. Like, that is so amazing that oh, you did yeah. that. And I'm like, take Bananas' balls out of your mouth, TJ. Jesus Christ, He man. did a like, little over-congratulating. Yeah, like, he, like TJ provides this color commentary, and he's just so goddamn biased. Sorry. Amazing just, performance <laughs> out digging yeah, bananas. Yeah. Amazing. 
Well, actually, the, you left out the beginning part of that conversation. He's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> amazing performance. <laughs> <laughs> and when Nate finally digs up Chris Sr., he's like, you totally screwed us. You know, he's saying it with a smile on his face. He knows that they fucked up. But Christina, she gets pissed. She's just like, how the fuck did I screw you over or whatever? Like, she's just screaming at him, basically. Well, I understand why Nate would say that, but at the same time, it was the absolute wrong time to say that. Like... You can joke about that and say that like an hour and a half from now, but you don't say it immediately after she gets out of that coffin because she was a well, she was in the coffin, there. I guess. Yeah. yeah, she was in the coffin for the last hour and a half, two hours, who knows? Do you think so? It was completely stupid of him to start doing that right then and there. Like, hey, yeah, uh, like if you're joking, if, if he's saying it as a joke, but it's coming off as serious because of the state of mind she's in. That's right. true. And they have to go to a jungle, and I'm sure she's not confident in herself or him. Yeah. The guy who didn't jump the plane. And she throws that back in his face. Remember exactly. That? <laughs> I thought that was awesome, because I really dug into Nate. The, the, that was my first impression of Nate, was the guy who's too scared to jump out of a plane. Where it's like, you've watched the challenge before. There's you've lots done that yourself. I have <laughs> jumped out of a plane. But you were Since then, I was dogging on Nate. And then after that, like, I, what was it, like a month ago, I jumped out of a plane, went skydiving. It's fucking awesome. One of the coolest things ever. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> so much fun. Yeah, Nate but you're not scared of heights, that. though, dude. I'm not like scared my of heights. But my brother's scared of heights, and he would never do that. Dude, you have to understand phobias. I am, am terrified of bats. When a bat flies in, I was with my girlfriend at the time, I sank into my chair. I'm like, oh my god. There's a bat in here. And she was just like, shoo, get out of here. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? And, and then she looked down at me and she's like, you fucking pussy. <laughs> I'm going to leave you years from now. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Batman was afraid of bats. Look what he did with that. Oh, he shit. made it his strength. He had to All throw right? Batman in the exactly. face. God damn he it. He made his phobia his strength. <laughs> I am not going to do that. <laughs> uh, no, don't try. And, you don't have Bruce Wayne's money. It's never going to work yeah, for you. Yeah, like so, <laughs> you know, this is not advice for you. I'm just saying that I'm afraid of heights too. No one wants to fall and hit the ground. No, you're not. You never would have jumped. I, I, you're scared of heights? I, I, yeah, I'm completely afraid of heights. I've never heard of I've this. I've been to the Sears Tower where you go up to like the hundred and something story or I don't know how tall it is and you can walk up to the glass window and look down. I walked up, I looked down and I was just like, I just started walking back slowly, and I just walked back until I hit a wall behind me, and I just stood there against the wall, and I was like, I am not looking down again. I'm terrified of that. Fuck that. I mean, I guess some people have, like, the life-crippling phobias, but you know what? To me, Nate doesn't have that. You know why? Because he got on the plane. If he was truly <laughs> afraid of heights, <laughs> he wouldn't true. have gotten on that plane. That's true. He did get on the plane. He let the parachute be strapped to him. And I asked, when I went skydiving, I asked the guy I was with, I was like, how many people, like, get up in the plane and then decide they don't, I never told you this, how many people decide they don't want to jump after they're up in the plane? And he's like, well, we do thousands and thousands of these a year. And I'm like, well, how many a year? He's like, maybe one person per year. Out of thousands, <laughs> only like maybe one person per year would get on the plane and then decide not to jump. Now, okay. That one guy is Nate. My uh, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, my only argument is that, listen, Nate was part of a challenge. Producers ushered them into this situation. He 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 wasn't going to his so-called girlfriend's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Already, Cheyenne's like, we're not going to draw all the skulls. So she draws it, it's white or whatever. Yeah. You know? And Devin was like, er, well, he says, like, well, I wanted, if it was up to me, I would have picked all the black skulls or picked all the skulls to go in. But Cheyenne said, no. And I'm just thinking, like, no, like, you weren't going to do it. Like, you're you smart. So? No, he's smarter than that. But well, I, th I think if she would have been like, hell yeah, and totally behind it, he would have done it. But he's smart enough, like, okay, yeah, you're probably right. We're not going to do this. Um, I kind of disagree just because 
we've been saying it all season where like the guys and the girls are working together you know you, you Unlike all the X's challenges where the guy takes the lead and they don't listen to the girl, you know what I mean? That's this true. time they're actually considering each other's feelings. And it's it's so it's so two thousand sixteen. Yeah, what is this equality? <laughs> I'm not used to this. So I, 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 I kinda bought into it. I'm just like, no man, this is this is what it is. Gender equality is here to stay. And as well it should. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a detriment to the challenge. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so so Cheyenne draws a white skull, and then Nani goes up. She draws a white skull. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank God. And Devin goes up to draw the skull, and Cheyenne says, too confessional. She's like, honestly, if Devin draws all the skulls, I am not going to do shit. I'm just going to stand there, and nothing's going to happen. We're, you know, Basically, we're just going to go home. You know what I mean? I'm not going to participate. So I'm just like, oh, god damn it. So Devin, he doesn't do the what he says. He doesn't pull a Jordan. You know what I mean? He reaches his entirely, all five digits of his hand, and he pulls out a white skull. Well, I guess what well, I'm saying is Jordan or- couldn't do it with all his fingers. <laughs> oh, that's what the five fingers <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, of course he used all five fingers. I didn't know what you were referencing. Right? I'm, oh. I'm, you're handicap shaming. I was, I was sitting here looking at Dave, and when I say it, all five fingers, I'm like, no reaction? All right, I'll, I'll explain it. <laughs> it was so over my head. I didn't think you would stoop as low to shame someone for a, you know, a birth defect. I didn't realize I was shaming, but... <laughs> Well, this is a totally different year. This is 2016, so yeah, I guess I was shaming. That first round, Daru gets in to, to Nicole way faster, and Nicole, even Nicole, is able to go faster than Nani. Nani goes at a certain pace. Nicole just books it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think Johnny it, Banana says, Nicole's a rat. Yeah, she's a, or, uh, Nicole she, is, is built for this challenge because she's built like a sewer rat. And what she's doing, it's like she's crawling in the sewer. And it's so true because she's so skinny and small. She weighs like 98 pounds. Like, she doesn't have a booty to catch on the top of the cage. She's just fucking, boom. Just She's so freaking tiny. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, they're supposed to be in like a cramped area. For a normal person, like, Nani weighs 140 pounds. That was what she said in the trivia thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I don't even think they said. That's... She, I don't think they showed how much, uh... What's her name? Nicole Wade. But I'm sure it's probably like 35 pounds less because she looks like she doesn't eat. So basically, Nani would have to lose five pounds. She would she would have to cut weight to get into the bantam weight division of yeah. the UFC. That's true. Huh? Where you get the opportunity to get knocked out by uh, Amanda Nunes. <laughs> I was so glad that you didn't say to get armbarred by Ronda Rousey. That's so 2015. <laughs> yeah, that's a good year late. <laughs> Had this happened a couple of months earlier, we would have been like, oh, you know, too late to get um, round rear house naked choked by Misha choked Tate. By Misha Tate. I mean, and a couple then a couple months months <laughs> would have been roundhouse kicked by Holly Holm. Yeah. <laughs> they were going to win. But the fact that we even had a mini final within the final, that was cool. And the fact that he took advantage of it. Like, is it horrible? Of course. Or, or maybe it's justified. Like I said, it depends on who you ask. DJ Matty Nice, he he basically said it's fine. Like, he, you know, Sarah took money away from him. He's doing it to her. Sarah totally did not disagree. take any money away from Bananas. All yeah. she did was send him into an elimination where he could fight it and earn his money. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know it's not the same, but some people are gonna just justify it. They're like, it's how the game's well, played, motherfucker. Like, hate the hate the game, not the player, because producers allowed this player to do what he did, right? Well, I'm gonna hate the player, not the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll. And the thing is, is ultimately, do I think like was it the right? Well, like he can do that, fine. That's awesome. Take all her money, even though she helped you get it. <laughs> yeah. Keep all the money for yourself, but be honest with me. Be a fucking stand-up person. Say you're greedy. Say you only wanted the money. Say you fucked her over. Don't justify it and try and justify it to yourself and to everyone else. Yeah. Quit saying all this shit like, oh, yeah, well, she she stabbed me in the back and took money away from me. Um, 
on Battle of the X's 2 and try and compare shit that's gone on in the past. Because if we want to bring up the past, we can bring up the island, like you said, and Paula. We can bring up how you screwed over your relationship with Nani. Mm -hmm. Like, Bananas, he manipulated Sarah this entire season, like we've said this entire season. Like, he's made her think that, oh yeah, we're friends now, we're getting along. He was just using her to get this money. And she felt guilty, too, about her prior decision. That was the worst part. I docked so many points from her. Oh yeah. Ever since the beginning of this season, she's always talked about how she screwed him over. And, like, he made her believe it, too. Uh, he manipulated Sarah so hardcore where I've lost a ton of respect for her, too. Like, I don't have respect for either of them anymore. <laughs> and, like, right at the end, when he says, yeah, I'm, yeah TJ, I'm going to take the money and run, all of a sudden I'm just like, oh, shit. I'm holding on to my seat, waiting for, like, fists to fly, for, like, shit to go down. And... I realize they just got done with the final, so they're kind of exhausted. But I still <laughs> expected goes, uh. Sarah to do something, and other than just fucking sit there and mope, like yeah. stand up for yourself. Good God, call him a fucking douchebag on camera. Uh, should we talk about the actual episode leading up to the uh, yeah, to the one great moment? See, that's the thing. We're gonna talk about a final where it's just like, well, we already blew our load, Dave. Right <laughs> early in the episode, now we gotta sit in the. In the film. No, nobody talked. <laughs> nobody talked about the finale of Sopranos and was like, "Let's talk about the first fifty-four minutes." No, you talked about you the talk last about, scene. Yeah, you talked about the black screen. <laughs> you, yeah, you talk about, talk about that. About okay, that. they're in the restaurant. They're eating onion rings. What does this mean? Then the screen cuts to black. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Well, I mean, even with all that being said, like I said, it saved the episode and perhaps the season. The, the fact that he did what he did. So, here's the final leading up to it. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I was going to say, maybe we should wait, Dave, but no. <laughs> um, it's done. That The point par- portion of the final is done right now. And yeah. they don't really say it, but now we're on to the final trek, which is up the mountain. So, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like, whoever won individually has just won from this eating contest. Yeah. Oh. So now it's up the mountain. Now you're just deciding just... the amount of money you're going to split. Now, at that very moment, wouldn't it be like, hey, you know, if I was Sarah, I'd be like, hey, Bananas has more points than me. Or anyone, and say, maybe we should slow down, take second place, you know what I mean? I don't know. It was just... It was, was the thing, was it, like, Bananas said it in one of the uh, uh, interviews where he said, we don't know if this is the last checkpoint or not. We don't know when the last checkpoint is. Like, right, know? right. I'm just saying so, for us. Yeah. The points are now done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but to them, they don't know that. Yeah, um, so they're going, um, the, again, this trek, like, some people struggle, some people are just fine. Um, Vince is stopping a lot, and he has to sit. He's, what is he, tramping up? Yeah. Is that what he's doing? Uh, Jenna's just standing there looking bored, just like, come on, like, she is not winded at all or anything, you know? Um Devin and Cheyenne, I mean, Cheyenne, she's the one that has to shit. She's just like, I gotta shit. And Devin's like, I know. And you just go, or something like that. I don't know. Everybody has to shit on a final. Like, come on. <laughs> just go behind a rock and shit. <laughs> like, didn't Sarah have to shit yeah, on a battle? She, yeah, she shit? shit. They're yeah. like, they're going like on the bikes around like the Norwegian side country. And then it's like, all right, I'm off into the woods and I'm taking a dump. Like, that happens on a final. But didn't somebody else do it on like going up the side of a freaking hill uh, who was it uh, i don't remember but it was there's been multiple seasons where we've seen it so but and you but, know bananas has multiple times but we've never seen it thank god for mtv's editing <laughs> whatever that's the shit they should show but they never do he doesn't shit in the woods he shits on his own teammates all right <laughs> that's true <laughs> he shits on their on his friendships um okay so basically devon and cheyenne they're gonna finish in third up the mountain It's because Cheyenne cannot move. She's not prepared for this at all. And Devin, uh, he's able to keep the atmosphere light. You know what I mean? So that is pretty admirable, I think. Uh, Jenna is just kind of not really saying, like, come on, Vince, you fucking slow piece of shit. She's just kind of standing there. Well, Vince, poor Vince, he's just like, I can't move, you know? Like, I can barely breathe. I'm a bigger dude and shit. And it's so funny because... I feel for him. Dave and I, we ran a Tough Mudder not too long ago. What was it, like, not even a month ago, right? Probably like two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, yeah. 
Um, and I totally fucking shit the bed. Like, Dave was Vince, running you, at Vince such an incredible the role pace. Of Vince. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, and you were Jenna, you dumb shit. How about that? <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, really? <laughs> Jenna's been to three finals in a row. That's true. Undefeated yeah. in eliminations. Yeah, that's mm. true. Um, but yeah, I, I, I started to cramp up like halfway through, and I, all I could do was walk like for the last six miles. It was, it was horrible. I hated myself. It was just a miserable experience. And, and so when watching this final, I was like, no, nah. <laughs> nobody judge anyone. You can ask with anybody. <laughs> Normally you would talk mad shit about Vince comparing to the way Zach did in the final. Although, comparing to CT screwing over Dio. Oh yeah. Jesus Christ. That's true. But then I, I never like, stopped though. Right. <laughs> I, I kept walking. I tried to run a few times, but it just... I was ill-prepared. I gotta get my redemption. But still, yeah, I, te- I totally... I felt you, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bananas and Sarah, they're getting up there. Not really much to say, except for they do stop to admire the beautiful landscape, which is fucking beautiful. It's breathtaking. You can see the big cloud shadows going over the valley and shit, and... Sarah's like, I'm gonna cry right now. Like, where's the beautiful? Burn? I watched it on my tiny laptop. You saw it on my <laughs> HDTV. So I'll take your word for it. Uh, and on my on my grainy laptop, it was like, yeah, it doesn't look that good to me. <laughs> I could just see you arms crossed. No, nope, I don't think so. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah wants to cry. She's like, this is heavenly. I can't believe we're doing this together and shit like that. You know. Yeah, you know, like, oh, we better oh, enjoy God, the moment, no. Sarah, because. <laughs> <laughs> not too long you're not going to be too happy uh, anything else no <laughs> I think I oh, think we just oh. retreaded everything we said there was a season. joke that I wanted to say previously like an yeah. off color tasteless joke but when we were talking <laughs> when we were talking about the final and how there wasn't a whole lot for them to do other than just like run around and do a couple puzzles I was wondering I was like hmm they don't have any games for them to do like the janky carnival games is it possible that all those games were on a helicopter? No, no. And the helicopter crashed and they lost all their supplies. And oh, then they're like, Jesus. shit, call up the zipline company. Call up the uh, short calling company. You're right, Dave. Tragedy plus time does equal comedy. <laughs> Regardless if it's only been like a couple months. And I don't remember them using a lot of helicopter shots. Exactly. There was a couple. <laughs> But oh. I know it, it, that guy. Oh, that guy man. died in a helicopter. At least use a lot of his footage to kind of pay homage to him. You know, <laughs> you can't just like throw it all under the rug. Like, yeah. Yeah. We can't use this shot. Why? Because it's very dizzying. <laughs> it's funny in a circle. Oh god. Uh, this is Battle of the Challenges podcast. Like, subscribe, share, comment. I do want to mention, I felt this way the entire season, but I didn't want to say anything. You should probably say like, share, and comment at the beginning of the episode, because yeah. then you're more likely to get people to like and comment. I guess. I, and I, plus, like, I think, like, out of, like, the hundred views we'll get, like, all but, like, seven people probably tuned out by now. <laughs> see, I have a really, like, I feel weird for asking people to do it anyway, so that's why I wait till the end, because only your true listeners will hear it. Yeah, but that's seven no, percent of the listening populace. <laughs> All right, I'll, it's I'll, YouTube. <laughs> it's shameless promotion everywhere. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Yeah. This Battle of Challenges podcast with Vincent Cloud and David Lauer. <laughs>